Hey, Francesca. Do you like apples? Yeah. yeah. Well, I got a number. How do you like them apples? First Boots and First Boots Internet, my name is Pridium and welcome to the most disappointing returning players in Survivor. Over 100 people have returned to play the game, some of them up to five times, and I figured we often talk about the best of the best, the ones who really leave their mark on those all-star seasons, but with such prestige and notoriety comes the other side of the coin as well. The players who left me underwhelmed, who failed to capture that lightning again. Whether it's their second time or their fourth or fifth, here are my top 10 for various reasons. And in case any of them are watching, not really in any order, they're just my top 10. Let's rip the bandaid off and start with the very first all-star season, season eight, and to me, unfortunately, the most most disappointing player is bah, 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 Rob Sesternino, the only player on this list that I've had the pleasure of meeting in real life. Rob was such a tour de force on the Amazon two seasons prior, he changed the game in a dramatic way. He was basically a winner without having won, which is not the best place to be when the cast is targeting winners. And so, after only four episodes, Rob was blindsided by Boston Rob and sent home before he could really do much of anything. I was so excited to see what damage he could do again, and then my hopes and his were dashed. But thankfully, he started a podcast afterward, and you know, honestly, I'm not sure that I would be here today if it weren't for that, so there's always a silver lining. I made an alliance with Boston Rob, and he says that the alliance is me, him, and Amber. I don't know how good Boston Rob's word is, but I've got his back, and a deal's a deal. First person voted out of Shapiro. Rob. Rob. Trump has spoken. On season 16, Micronesia, fans versus favorites, there are two returning players that sting even more than Rob going. And that starts with Johnny Fairplay in the premiere, leaving the game after just one episode. You're telling me you bring back favorites, you have the biggest villain of the first 15 seasons, Fairplay gets a second chance to be just as dastardly, just as cunning, just as conniving. And for a second, he was pulling it off. And then at the end of the episode, he asked to be voted out. And he also started a podcast. In truth, Fairplay was hurting from being unable to take medication after his jaw was messed up from being face slammed by Danny Bonaducci right before the season at the reality awards. It didn't have much to do with being on Survivor and unfortunately his one episode stint left a lot to be desired. Despite Micronesia being one of my favorite seasons, this first exit is a wet blanket. I think it's insane that there's nine other of your favorite survivors of all time and they all believe what I say. Have you not watched this show before? 11 minutes later. Kind of already over this, so I'm actually leaning towards asking you guys. What are you doing? Shut up. I'm just emotionally not here. So, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just, I can't. I think, you know, somebody has to go home. Somebody wants to go home. And um, he's going to go home. So it's a quit. This is not a quit. First person voted out of Survivor fans versus favorites. Johnny Fairplay. That's six, that's enough. Johnny Fairplay, the tribe has spoken. And then we jump to episode three of the same season and we see the next disappointing returning player in Yao Man Chan. Yao Man, ugh, oh, we love the Yao Man. One of the greats from season 14, Fiji, who is one truck deal away from winning the game and then he gets clipped right at the finish line. From kissing his turtle idol to hacking challenges to just being a really likable presence through every episode, he then returns two seasons later and he's barely on the season. He does, however, bash Fairplay's head into the side of a boat, which was a moment, but otherwise he is swiftly voted out after his alliance just doesn't hold the numbers. Not so much Yao's fault, but still, I can't say I wasn't disappointed. The biggest round of applause so far, Yao Man. I saw him come out with that little Yao Man hat and those little glasses. I love the Yao Man. Third person voted out of fans versus favorites. Yao Man. That's five, that's enough. You need to bring me your torch. Yeah, man, the tribe has spoken. I consider myself lucky. Many people want to get on Survivor once, where well, I've been on twice, but I wish 
uh, I would have in, in there longer. That's the way how this game is. It's a very cruel game, but that's the way it goes. The fourth disappointment is from season 26, Karamoan, and that is Brenda Lowe. From the original Parvati 2.0 in Nicaragua to a purple edit, completely invisible except to dance on the side of a challenge and get Dawn to do this at Final Tribal. Despite reaching the final six, Brenda just wasn't on the season almost at all, and yet she had such an impact in the final few episodes that she almost won the fan favorite award. I never would have suspected that Brenda would go from being the Black Widow of Nicaragua to such a low-key, pacified, invisible game, but credit where credit's due, it did almost work. I just wish we saw more of it. As soon as Eddie dropped in the water, it was like glee all over my face. I mean, I have to work on that because I felt bad <laughs> showing how happy I was. 15th person voted out and the sixth member of our jury. Brenda. I knew it. Need to bring me a torch. Brenda, the tribe has spoken. Time for the go. Hurts. I should also mention that Eric Reichenbach is not in my top 10, although if I were to make a 2.0 version, he'd, he'd be there. That said, speaking of low expectations and then having those expectations knocked out of the park in a bad way, my fifth disappointment is, believe it or not, Colton Cumby from season 27, Blood vs. Water. Colton was a major villain on season 24, and here he was back again to maybe prove that he was the strategic force we saw him in the pre-merge. But then, <laughs> nope. Right out of the gate in the premiere, Colton was a major baby. I could understand being frustrated at being on the bottom, being annoyed with your tribe mates, being sad to be forced to go against your loved one. But ultimately, that's not why Colton is here. He's here because he quit on day seven. He wasn't voted out. He wasn't medevac this time. He just threw in the towel. Going into Blood vs. Water, I was so curious to see what Colton could bring on a second appearance given how larger than life he was in One World, how he was received by the audience, and this just wasn't it. If he's changed, wouldn't that be a beautiful story? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But then again, it's Colton Comfy. When I'm angry, I turn into like a raging bitch and hopefully this camp will erupt into chaos because if there's one thing I know, I can rule in chaos. I think it's interesting with Colton. I think he came out here wanting to be different than the person he was. And he pretended to be for like a day and a half or something. And now Colton, you're crying. What are you crying about? I don't want to be here anymore. I'm tired of being hated by everybody. I'm tired of being. <laughs> you turned into that person before your back was against the wall. Well, Colton, you came back for a second time because you said you wanted to show how much you've grown, but your behavior now shows you haven't. And the irony is the opportunity for the growth you seek is right in front of you. Grab your stuff, head out, boat will pick you up. On season 31, Cambodia, second chance, we of course had some players who fell short of my expectations. Because most of this cast was set up to succeed, they all had some kind of a narrative going in, I was ready to see who would impress me. I was excited to see what Vetus could do again after having a fun underdog story on season 27, how he managed to survive being on the bottom against all the women of his swap tribe. He had this rivalry with his golden boy brother Aris, and then they both found some kind of comfort in sharing the same fate in the end. But then Vetus got weird and was booted in the first episode of Cambodia, and I feel like this was a very unceremonious second serving to his story. To be so propped up in one season and then to fall so flat in the next? Not great. When I played Survivor the first time, I got put on a tribe with all women, and they were gunning for me hard, and I was fortunate enough to get myself into their good graces. I don't want to be perceived as a manipulator because that's a threat, especially early on. Vita's just going around, just like trying to flirt, and it's annoying me. It's not sexy in any way. Like, just go away. You're like a bug. First person voted out a Survivor second chance, Vetus. Did you bring me your torch? Vetus, the tribe has spoken. Speaking of wanting more and getting absolutely nothing, my number seven is Kelly Wigglesworth from season 31, Cambodia. The OG runner-up from season one gets a second chance to win the game after all this time, and what do we get? We get nothing. Seriously, after the premiere episode, she's just not on the season. I guess the reasoning is something like Kelly didn't adapt to the modern game and the editors left her on the cutting room floor. She was randomly blindsided early in the merge and what do we have to say for it? Kelly was the poster child for this season and I can't help but feel like not only was I disappointed, but the producers were too. 
15 years ago, I was in Borneo, first season, and I almost won. Made it 39 days, lost by one vote. I'm much stronger and smarter, and I'm a mom now. Eight hours later. Ninth person voted out, third member of our jury, Wilkesworth. Kelly, the tribe spoke. The eighth disappointment goes to a player who is like a ghost. If you told me they played a second time, I would not even remember when at first. I'm talking about Caleb from season 34 Game Changers, the guy who was medevaced two seasons prior when he went too hard under the beating hot Cambodian sun and had to get airlifted out of the game before he lost his life. If that is not the setup for one of the greatest comebacks in Survivor history, I don't know what is. He suffered the most extreme evacuation Survivor has ever seen to this day and hopefully will stay that way. And of course the producers wanted him back on the show as soon as possible. As a super fan of Big Brother, I even wanted him to come back after his appearance in Ko Rong despite watching him on the BB16 live feeds. And then he did come back in Game Changers, which to be fair, they probably did change how they handle evacuations after his, so he does have that going for him. And then he was voted out after two episodes. He is one of the biggest afterthought returning players in Survivor, and even though he cast a small shadow compared to like half the Game Changers cast, I was still hoping for something more. Today's the ninth day, which I left last time. I got life flighted out on a helicopter and almost lost my life. So the only thing on my mind now is they're gonna go strong with this tribe and keep me and give me another life in this game. Third person voted out. Caleb, that's four, that's enough. Need to bring me your torch. Good luck. Caleb, the tribe spoke. And so let's continue with Game Changers, where it's basically disappointments galore. Like a crane game rigged to give us the worst outcome, the pre-merge of this season is rife with disappointment across the board. As disappointed as I was for many of these boots, for what it's worth, I do think Malcolm gets an unfair shake. I think Tony gave his gold for like the one episode he was on. I even think Sierra is okay enough to dodge my top 10. But then we get to Jeff Varner who is the ninth player I'll be talking about in this video for this list, and it's quite easy to understand why he is one of the most disappointing returning players. While I will admit that his appearance on Cambodia was erratic and at times entertaining, he did only make it four episodes before exiting stage left. Given that he had a leap from season two to season 31 and he only lasted four episodes, I just had to ask myself, what else did we need to see from him? Was he really a game changer? He wasn't, but that didn't stop him from answering the question for us. The bar was low for his third appearance, and gosh, it became subterranean after this season. Zeke's not being truthful. There's something about Zeke nobody knows. If I have to go to tribal tonight and raise mortal hell, I'm gonna do it. I'm not going quietly off this island. Why haven't you told anyone you're transgender? No question who's going home tonight, right? No, sir. Garner, Travis spoke. Which leads me to number 10. Last on this list, which by the way is going chronologically, this is one of my most disappointing return appearances in all of Survivor, especially from a narrative perspective. My number 10 is Ozzy on Game Changers, where he made it to the merge and then was swiftly voted out on a random whim. Ozzy's fourth appearance is so disappointing because it just did not feel like Ozzy, one of the biggest characters in Survivor history. Ozzy is a legend of the game. He is from one of the most popular old school seasons, from Cook Islands to Micronesia to South Pacific. We did not need Ozzy back for a fourth time. His Redemption Island run was the best way it could end for him after three seasons, both narratively and from a hype level perspective. That being said, at the same time, even though I didn't really care for him to come back, I was excited to see what Ozzy could do on a fourth appearance, but then I realized outside of winning, nothing good could come of this. He had nothing left to prove. One thing that I really do like about Survivor is that I don't really feel like, well, for the most part, they don't burn through their returning players so often, so frequently. And I also just don't feel like the theme of Game Changers was very befitting for most of the cast, and honestly, I don't even know if Ozzy should really be on that cast anyway. The bar was so high after South Pacific, there really was nowhere for him to go but down. And Ozzy was pretty irrelevant on Game Changers. His boot was out of left field, and his legacy was unnecessarily ending on a low note. The only question I'm left asking is, 
Was it worth it? One thing that I've learned about this game is that timing is everything. And Sari and I, we're good. I want her on my side, voting with me against other people. Ninth person voted out, the second member of our jury, Ozzy. Ozzy, job spoken. Job, guys. Good luck eating. And those are what I consider to be the top 10 most disappointing returning players in Survivor. But that's just my top 10. Let me know some of yours. There is plenty to talk about. So much, in fact, that I will just straight up admit, I am going to do a 2.0 of this video because I have a lot more to say. Either way, thank you to my patrons for all your support, for not disappointing me with each of your returns. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave your mark on your way out. Don't pee on the fire. That's not what I meant. And I will see you in the next one. Once I add a little bit of salt and pepper to this rocky entree. If I am voted off first a second time, I will eat this rock. It's not gonna happen. First person voted out of Survivor fans versus favorites. Francesca. Francesca, Trump spoke. Okay. Ow! Ah! I mean, this is freaking unbelievable, man.